Hello and welcome. And thanks everyone for joining us today for our December virtual medium format meetup from Hustleblog. My name is Emmy, joining you from the New York City area. If this is your first medium format meetup, we're delighted you're joining us for those for these community gatherings online. Today, we will be talking to the one and only Sui O. Sui is an internationally acclaimed architecture photographer based in San Francisco, California. With a background in architecture, she uses her artistic eye to create stunning architectural photographs. She has been presented with numerous awards and have been in countless publications, such as Medium Format Magazine, Popular Photography, and Just Lux, to name a few. Her, her photographs have been displayed in exhibitions, most recently the Somerset House in London, the I Am Studio in San Francisco, and Through the Lens Exhibition at the Parliament in Oakland, California. And let's not forget, that she is one of our Hustleball masters from 2016. Today's talk will be about 45 minutes. So we will be talking about her gear, her origins, and some of her collections. I would like to welcome Sweet O. Hi, Sweet. Hi, Emmy. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for inviting me to present in uh, today's uh, webinar. As always, I'm uh, very honored uh, for the invite and I look forward to sharing my work. Thanks for joining us. And now where are you speaking to us from today? I'm actually calling from my home uh, in San Mateo, California. Um, I'm surviving so far so good in this uh, uh, pandemic, COVID pandemic uh, lockdown. So. Um, I have a day job uh, as a project manager, and I have been working from home uh, since March. So um, I'm actually oh, wow. enjoying working from home because my workstation is just right next to my sliding door, and I can see all my plants outside. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Same, same. Uh, okay, so we'll just uh, move into our, you know, your uh, work today. Uh, but can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you are today? Um, I'm originally from Penang, Malaysia. Um, uh, my, training, my training in architecture began when I was in uh, college in Malaysia. And after that, I received a scholarship to continue my master's in architecture in Arizona State University. And after that, in 20. 2002, I moved to San Francisco and worked as a designer specializing in hospital design. And I've been doing that for like um, more than uh, 15 years now. So um, right now I'm actually a project manager, uh, managing construction uh, projects for a nonprofit healthcare organization in the Bay Area, California. Oh, wow. Yeah. Amazing. And would you like to talk about um, this first image here? Um, oh yeah, this is an image that um, I took when I visited New York, I think two years ago. This is the uh, Fulton Center uh, by uh, Grimshaw Architects. So um, this is actually a handheld shot and I've always wanted to uh, visit this building because of this, uh, the design and especially the light shaft, as you can see, um, this light shaft actually provides natural daylight that goes straight down into the, um, the, the train station below. Um, so, um, and also the details of the, the light shaft um, and um, the, the detail of the spiral staircase. So, but what's amazing is um, this is, uh, I mean, I, mean I'm, 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 I like the dynamic range of the camera because I could pick out all the details um, even though I shot it a little bit underexposed so that I don't have, uh, you know, the whites being over, um, uh, how would I say, overexposed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, do you wait for a certain time of day to shoot? No, this like one was just, uh, you know, me and my friends, we went there, we walked around and um, I just um, wanted to take a, a really balanced and symmetrical shot basically the details and the light um, you know that's what i wanted to capture plus not to mention you know the 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 patterns you know and the lines right uh, that kind of uh, added some interest to to the picture mm -hmm. yeah. 
we'll go on. Um, now, speaking of like um, how you got started, what drew you in first? Um, was it the architecture or the photography? Mm, I would say architecture. Uh, I grew up as an artist. I mean, I've always wanted to pursue a career that involves a lot of drawing and anything to do with creativity. Um, mm -hmm. My first option actually um, was uh, graphic design. But at okay. that time, the prospects and the salary, the pay for graphic designers were not so great. So I opted and pursued my studies in architecture. And then um, photography then came about when I started taking pictures of buildings as part of uh, my work. And also um, when I travel. So, but I only had uh, a point and, and shoot then, you know, so a small mm -hmm. camera. And even though I enjoyed taking photos then, I never pursued photography. Um, as my pictures were, you know, they're, you know, coming from a point and shoot, right? It's kind of, kind of flat and unappealing. So I didn't know anything about apertures, you know, um, exposure, nothing about post-processing. So it mm -hmm. was more like just, um, just like a side hobby, but I never pursued, I never pursued it, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. they go pretty hand in hand, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, I wanted to say the image that I'm showing here is actually an office building by the yeah. architect called uh, Studio Gang. Um, I took this shot last year when I went to New York. Um, it's a relatively new building and it's by the, it's just located by the High Line. Um, what I love about, yeah, what I love about this image is the, the um, geometrical forms, right? And also the reflection of this corner of this building, it gives it like different tones and patterns. So it's sort of like creating an, an abstract look to, to the image. I think it's still very cool. Okay. Um, now how and when did you get started into <clears throat> photography? Um, I, I started back in 2011 um, when I met a photographer friend and he introduced me to photography, to the world of photography. Uh, he showed me some of his uh, amazing work on Flickr and then taught me some uh, basic, gave me some basic tips on post-processing. And at that okay. time, I, I started off with using Picasa and it, it was like a very basic, you know, post-processing tools. But with that, I already got hooked. And, um, mm -hmm. and then um, at that time, I was, um, I only had that point of shoot. And so I got myself uh, 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 the Sony NEX um, camera, which is, kind of, I think it's a, uh, a crop sensor, a really small one. And then, um, so I was kind of like got hooked into photography. I did a lot of shooting in the weekends. And then after that, I upgraded to a full frame DSLR. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then along the way, I kind of um, met some some uh, a few friends um, uh, during photo walks. And also at that time, Google Plus was like the hub of photography and all photographers um, sort of uh, got together over in Google Plus and I met quite a few people there. And I've actually mm -hmm. learned quite a lot from friends and, and from them. Apart from that, I also did some, my own research on photography also, you know, watching tutorials online. Um, yeah, so, and have been shooting and experimenting and, um, you know, figuring out what what worked for me and what didn't work for me in terms of vision, you know. So after many years of um, uh, experimenting and shooting, I think I have managed to come up with my own approach and style in photography. Oh yeah, you definitely, you definitely have. Um, many, many years. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, would you like to talk about this image a bit? Um, so um, this image is uh, 
uh, I took this image when I was in New York last year. Um, and um, let me see this image. Okay. Yeah, I took it last year um, when I visited New York. This is an image of the vessel. Uh, when I shoot architecture, I do not really look at the building as a whole, but I look at the surroundings and also um, the framing and also the lines and, and other elements uh, that, you know, that would create that image. I look at them as an abstract and how I can create that image. So over here is a combination of I would say four different buildings and how I combine them and, and make them into an abstract image. So it's, it's looking at the, the, the patterns, the lines, the textures, and also the balance. Um, I also, you know, looked at, you know, um, the rule of thirds and how I, I, I create that line and, and, and create it into a, a balance, um, an abstract image. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. And a little bit. Uh, could you tell us about this image a little bit? Um, this one is actually um, yeah. This is this is also an image in New York. Uh, it's a it's a, a high end residential building designed by the famous Zaha Hadid. Um, it's also located along the High Line, um, and on West Twenty Eighth Street, I think. So same thing, um, when I shoot, uh, you know, I look at the details. Uh, in this case, the facade of this building is very interesting because of the, uh, the handcrafted metal facade, the curved line, and also combination of the vertical window mullions together with the reflection of the uh, buildings across from it that added some colors to the image. So, um, so, so yeah, so that is the, 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 that's the reason why I, I took this image. Wow, so interesting. I've never seen uh, this building in the city. Yeah, it's, it's, a, yeah it's a really interesting building. I mean, Zara Hadid is one of my favorite architects and her, mm -hmm. all her buildings are just amazing. Yes, yeah, really it was fun, yeah, it was fun to shoot. Mm -hmm. well, now this is this is the fam world famous Oculus, right? Oh yes. Um, what <laughs> I is love, yeah, this is <laughs> definitely one of my favorite buildings to shoot. I've been to New York twice. Um, first mm -hmm. thing when I arrived in New York, this is the first building I wanted to see, and um, mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's very impressive. Um, so and this image. Um, Mm -hmm. Again, you know, I look at uh, the details uh, yeah. and then trying to, I mean, look at the details, the curve lines, you know, giving it a, a bit of a positive and negative space, you know, to give mm -hmm. it that proportion and balance. Um, and the technical approach for this, this kind of shot is that, um, you know, I would typically shoot at aperture of uh, f11. Um, and because my hands sometimes are kind of shaky, so I try to put my shutter speed, right, uh, not at least above 125 seconds and above. Anything below that, I always notice that my images are blurry. Uh, the faster speed I put, the better. Uh, in terms of ISO, it all depends on how bright the day is. Uh, not typically for a, like a bright, really bright day, I would just put it normal at um, ISO 100, yeah. Wow, yeah. Now this is, um, this is sort of a um, question from, you know, like your architecture and your full, you know, your full-time job um, and photography, but like, how do you find the time to photograph these images while you maintain your full-time job? Uh, Typically, you know, I would um, take some time off, like uh, um, I don't have that many kind of a PTO. So normally I would just take like a week off every few months. 
And then during that week, that's the time I would go and just focus on, apart from visiting the place, you know, like say for example, New mm -hmm. York, right? Apart from doing the touristy stuff, I would spend um, a certain percentage of my time shooting. Um, and, mm -hmm. and I'm lucky enough to have some good friends in New York who was able to um, show me around some really some all this uh, great buildings so that saved me a lot of time trying to locate and how to get to their destination so yeah so that's yeah okay. Okay. more images of the oculus here um but what drew you drew you into architecture um you see i'm I, I, I'm an artist, right? And I love art and anything that involves creativity. So um, a building to me is an object of art itself, right? It takes a lot of creativity, imagination, and vision to conceive a building. So mm -hmm. one, you know, one has to be able to feel and understand, you know, the volumes and space, mm -hmm. spatial relationship, and putting all these elements together uh and 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 that defines a building and mm -hmm. i think it's, it's it's a very exciting and and challenging task you know to design a building um and the outcome is always very rewarding right so especially when you see all that hard work materialize and uh, you know in front of your eyes when it's built right and you see the final product you know so mm -hmm. it's so rewarding and um, just to see your creativity and your your art right in front of your eyes. Yeah. So um, so although um, my 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 work doesn't um, so I don't do much designing right now for the my work as a project manager. But when I photograph a building, so this is like my creative outlet. I need that outlet, right? So. When I photograph a building, so I try to put myself in the designer's shoes, right? And I, mm -hmm. I and try and feel and understand the building and also try to understand the thought process that goes behind the designer's intention. So, mm -hmm. I mean, so that's always fun. So I, I enjoy doing that. And it, does, it sure does come out in the photographs that you take. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, what well, can you tell us about this image here? It's the same. Is this the so, Oculus as well? Yeah, this is Oculus itself. So, so same thing, you know, I, when I shoot uh, architecture, you know, I, 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 I basically look at parts of the building, mm -hmm. not the building as a well. whole. Um, and yeah. when I look at parts, right, um, I look for, again, you know, shadows lines and contrast and light is so important when it comes to shooting because without light mm -hmm. right, the building will look flat it won't look alive when there's light you yeah. can see the shadows you can see the colors you can see the contrast mm -hmm. and it brings out kind of the 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 brings life to the building to the image so um yeah. so in this case um, and also framing and composition is so important. So how I frame it, in this case, I put it as a square. Um, but if you notice, mm -hmm. when I crop and when I frame the image, it's not a random mm -hmm. crop. There's a lot of thought going into it that I make sure that my lines ends in the corners nicely and make them all balanced. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's my approach when I shoot. Uh, this kind of images. What would you say is your favorite uh, time of day to shoot? Um, my favorite time of the day to shoot is, I would say sometime early morning or late afternoon, um, just because the light at that time, right? When the sun uh, angle is mm -hmm. kind of uh, low, right? So when mm -hmm. it, and it hits the building, it will cast some really interesting shadows. I typically do not like to shoot during noon because the light comes mm -hmm. directly above. So, and then 
the, the and the light will be too harsh you know so when it's too harsh and especially for like white buildings it will be all overexposed it's hard to shoot mm -hmm. details um you know the the details will pop you know so so yeah so the best time is um either like uh, early morning 10 until 10 11 and then mm -hmm. from probably two to to late afternoon yeah okay. yeah cool yeah because like I, I was thinking to myself you know with the amateurs i like me compare myself you know i would take the image of the entire building instead of looking at parts so yes uh, yeah. You know, you know, when I photograph buildings now, I think I'm going to look um, at yeah. things a little bit more now. Uh, and oh, this yeah, is also the right. It's always, I mean, if mm -hmm. next time when you go and should you look at what are the outstanding features of that building mm -hmm. versus the building as a whole, mm -hmm. you know, so, and then, and then that's where you will be more, um, I think, uh, how would I say, uh, um you are then you're able to start looking at the building differently and you will actually appreciate the architecture better then you say you'll start noticing oh wow i never knew that detail on that building you know or the feature of that building you know so sometimes you you it will make you appreciate the architecture more mm -hmm. um now this is, this is probably probably one of your most iconic images and probably one of my favorites too but um i don't know could you tell us a little bit about this yeah um so um this is the image that i won for the hearts of black masters competition and um it's also my favorite bridge and uh, this bridge is located in uh, it's called the sri wawasan bridge in putrajaya it's uh, located in Malaysia. Um, when I took this building, it's uh, sorry, this this bridge. It was a very very sunny and hot day. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember. You know, in Malaysia, the weather is so hot and humid. And um, I remember when I took this uh, shots of this bridge, I had to go in and out of the car a lot because mm -hmm. uh, luckily I had a, a very patient friend, a good friend of mine who was sitting in the car waiting for me. Mm -hmm. And um, because it was so hot, it was so humid, I could only last like uh, a, a few seconds each time. Even a minute, I would feel, oh my God, it's just so hot. I had to go and jump into the car, into the AC, get a breather, drink some water and go out and shoot again. But these mm -hmm. are, this is a handheld shot. Um, mm -hmm. What I love about this bridge is that it's so unique because mm -hmm. it offers so many different perspectives. And mm -hmm. when you kind of walk around the bridge, like 360 degrees, it offers you so many different angles and perspective. Uh, it is really a beautiful design, and I'm, I'm really, uh, I, I really love this this bridge. Um, and uh, the the shot that I'm showing here, what I'm trying to show is the both the elegance and the delicateness of the bridge design, and also emphasizing on the flow of the cables towards the main post. Um, and then you can see the bridge as though it's dancing and kind of uh, swaying gracefully for the viewer to see. Oops, sorry, my phone. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, so, yeah. I, I, I really love this bridge. Um, I every time if I go visit, um, Malaysia and if I go visit Putrajaya, I would drop by, and mm -hmm. um, take some pictures. Again, you know. Yeah. And I'm sure you find like a different angle every time mm -hmm. you approach it yeah and i know uh, i i have seen so many people taking uh pictures of this bridge also i think mm -hmm. out there when i posted this image <laughs> definitely and now can you tell us uh about your experience with the hustleblad masters competition oh um i would say uh it was a very 
How would I say? I, I would say it's a very memorable experience for me. Um, I remember uh, when I received the, the, the call from uh, Mark Whitney from London. I mm -hmm. was like, uh, I was so shocked and I was so surprised. And, mm -hmm. and, and I was at work at that time when he called me. So, you know, so, so I, I, I kind of like shouted, right? Like, oh my God, this is so great, right? So I know my <laughs> coworkers like, oh, what, what's going on, you know? So yeah, so it, it, it was a really amazing experience. Um, mm -hmm. And um, to be honest, um, even as of today, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm very honored to be a, a Hasselblad master. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Uh, and now what, what made you decide to submit to Hasselblad masters? So it's interesting. So um, I actually never thought of uh, submitting for the competition because um, I thought that, uh, you know, that you have to own a Hasselblad camera, you know, to, to take part in the competition. And then, and then one day a good friend of mine, who's, um, he's um, um, the owner and publisher of this uh, Luxurious magazine. And um, he actually encouraged me to give it a try. He said, hey, sweet, why don't you just give it a try, right? Um, so it was, uh, I, I kind of hesitated because I haven't, I think at that time I didn't really enter that many competitions. So he said, so it was a last minute entry. I think I submitted it a day or two before the closing date. So, okay. yeah, so, so, and I owe it to my friend <laughs> for uh, encouraging me to enter. Wow. Um, now, would you like to talk about some of these images here? Um, so this image is actually uh, some office buildings in San Francisco. So, um, so I think what caught my attention is how can I uh, uh, frame right these two two separate buildings together. Um, because what caught my attention is because of the two different textures for mm -hmm. uh, the you know on the facade of these two buildings, and and when I shoot architecture, I I again you know I don't shoot. I mean, it doesn't mean that when the lines are straight, you shoot it straight. You know, you can mm -hmm. angle your camera as and how you want it. You know, mm -hmm. and um, as uh, you know, to come up with a, an abstract and, and balanced image. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what I, yeah. Okay. Um, this is this is also one of my favorite buildings in San Francisco. It's called the Mira Tower. It's designed again uh, by Studio Gang. Um, she's the architect also for the famous Aqua Building in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, and this one again, I and 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 I, I, I'm sure you remember this one, Emmy, because we shot this. I shot this during the House of Black photo walk last year. Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. Can't believe so, that. <laughs> yes. And then I know I had like a few people with me, and this is one of the buildings that um, that uh, uh, I I showed uh, all the you know people and how mm -hmm. to shoot this building. So. Um, and just looking at the building and looking at different angles. What's great about this building is because of this kind of a twisting um, uh, windows, you know, mm -hmm. and it creates a really interesting texture, you know, and um, to, to the image. So this is also one of those buildings that, you know, as you walk around at different angle, you can take many different types of perspective um uh, uh of of the uh, of this image yeah i love this building i know too. i know a couple of uh participants in the uh, photo walk they came up with some really really mm -hmm. cool images of this building oh wow um now who who are your artistic influences um do you have mm -hmm. any did you have any mentors uh i would say that um my older brother, my oldest, my eldest brother is my first inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, he used to work as a graphic designer and growing up as a, as a child, I used to, I remember 
uh, you know, used to um, stand be beside him and watching him draw. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, you know, so I've always been kind of inspired. And as I was growing up, he taught me how to draw and how to paint. Um, he also criticized uh, my paintings a lot. So <laughs> I, I, I learned a lot from him. And okay. then in terms of photography, you know, um, I do have a few photographers that uh, who inspired me in my early photography journey. When I started in um, 20, 2012, uh, when I started photography in 2012, um, I discovered the work of um, Joel Gingela and also the, this lady who's also a friend, Juliana Cosporado. Um, and I discovered their work on Google Plus and um, their work uh, is mainly black and white uh, fine art architecture photography. Um, when I look at their work, it's kind of, that was kind of sort of sparked me, right, to go into photography, uh, uh, architecture photography, because you know it kind of sort of opened my eyes that I could continue, so I could combine all three of my passions, you know, photography, art, and architecture. So mm -hmm. it was um, so it was through their work that um, got me, you know, to to pursue architectural photography. Wow! Yeah. Okay. Oh wow! This is a great photo. Wow! Looking so yeah, thank you. <laughs> so this one, this shot is uh, again uh, taken during the photo walk uh, with Hasselblad. Mm -hmm. Um, again, you know, looking at uh, buildings um, as uh, parts, right, and not as a whole, mm -hmm. and combining, you know, um, architectural elements, you know, lines, and um, to create a, sort of an abstract shot. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, you can see the light is so important because at that time the light was hitting onto, you can see on the balconies of the lower building below. So it added some contrast and some more, how I say, some patterns that enhance, right? The mm -hmm. patterns and the, the balconies, you know, the shadows, the contrast of the shadows, um, mm -hmm. and it helped to kind of give it a balance to this image. And the blue color, of course, from the, uh, the, the curtain wall helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, is this from the same walk as well? Yes, this is actually from also the same walk. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, talking to a few participants at that time. I said, uh, I, when I saw this, this, uh, uh, how would I say this, this framing, right? And mm -hmm. when the light hits on that building. So this image here is actually consists of two buildings. Mm -hmm. One is the one on the right side with the silver, uh, kind of a reflection, and then the one, the orange and more of the kind of the brownish red is another building. So um, I was talking to a few participants. I said, "Hey, look, see, this is what I'm looking at." So mm -hmm. and they don't see it, right? So when I showed it to them, say, "Oh, now I see it," you know. So uh, so I said, "Yeah, just you know, look at the colors." Make, you know, just use your like fingers and, you know, frame it, you know, imagine it as a frame, right? And also, this not only shows you the, the colors, but it also shows you the, the rectangulars, the lines, the, um, the reflection on that, the building on the right side, you know, is reflecting the other building from across the street. So it has different colors, you know, um different lines and different textures yeah it's, oh, it's chaotic but like still so yeah. i don't know organized so, chaotic sort of <laughs> <laughs> so, um and this seems like it's in san francisco as well yes this mm -hmm. one it's one morning i um uh, one day I, I i told myself you know I, i'm like so tired i have to get out from the house right so mm -hmm. I, I decided to, and I was out there to 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 do some scouting for 
um, some photos for a friend. And so I went there early morning. Um, I said, okay, I got to get there before like 10 o'clock because mm -hmm. I want that light. So I did, and it was great because their CD was quiet. So it's like, you know, early morning, you know, fresh air, no one. I had a whole place to myself and I walked around and you can see, um, so again, when I shoot uh, architecture buildings, I'm also looking at sort of how buildings converse with each other, you know, how they talk to each other. Um, in this case, I have this um, sort of this pattern uh, cladding on the left side and then the right side are the, the lines of uh, uh, a curtain wall of another building and then behind it is a third building the Salesforce tower but I purposely wanted to leave kind of a gap in between and mm -hmm. still to show that they are kind of talking to each other you know and yet you know to create um, and that give it some breathing space in between the buildings so that's the story of my image <laughs> very cool um, so we're going to kind of switch over to something a little bit different, um, you know, your night series images. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this series of work? Yes. Um, so um, when I got the X1D, I, I, when, I, when I started uh, photography, I never really tried out night, night photography because um, I've tried a few, but they, they're never really successful. They either come up blur or, you know, the images are not sharp, you know. But when I got the X1D, it's, it's a game changer, you know. So um, this this image here is actually taken in Hong Kong uh, two years ago when I visited uh, Hong Kong. I typically would stop over Hong Kong on my way home back to Malaysia. Uh, and, um, and I also have a sister who lives there. So, I mean, I would kind of stop by and say hi, but at the same time, you know, I would, you know, spend that um, one or two days to shoot, to go around Hong Kong and shoot. And this image here, it is a, 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 an image of a night market in Temple Street, the famous Temple Street in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. uh, this image is actually kind of one of the popular spots uh, for Instagrammers. If you go, you can see this image is not like, it's nothing new. You'll see quite a lot of this image. And I wanted to go and see this. I have been to the night market many times last night because I used to work in Hong Kong before, but mm -hmm. I've never seen it from at high level. So um, so I said, okay, I'm going to go in and, 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 and shoot this, you know. So it's taken from a parking garage across from the street. And I think I shot this with... Uh, a 30 mm thing, 30 mm lens. And um, so what kind of uh, impressed me is that uh, I'm one of those people that, you know, when I shoot, I come back and immediately look at my photos. And I'll, especially in night photography, I always zoom in like 300%. So mm -hmm. uh, I was just like so blown away by the details because I could actually see, you know, the merchandise of all these stores when I zoom in at uh, at 300 percent so mm -hmm. you know so that's why it inspires me and I said I gotta go and try and shoot this I gotta try and shoot that I'm so curious how it will turn out you know so mm -hmm. uh, yeah so I I, I I I actually like this shot you know because of the colors you know the details the colors that lit up the the street versus the old buildings, the architecture on the both sides that frame that street. And, and, and also the, um, the hustle and bustle, you know, uh, uh, along that street with all this many people. And it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a long exposure, I think. So you can see that the people that walks in the center, it's a little bit blurry. Oh, yeah. I think that adds to the image though. You could see like how busy it is. Now, do you do you usually use uh, a tripod 
um, for you know your daytime and nighttime photography? Uh, yes, I actually actually um, for daytime, not so much. Mm -hmm. um, just because when the light is right, I mean it's mainly um, I, it's mostly handheld. Mm -hmm. um, but for night shots, yes, I do. I I, I use tripod for night shots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for daytime, unless I'm doing a long exposure, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I will use a tripod if I'm doing a long exposure, which I don't do so often. But uh, for night shots, uh, I do. Like in this case, uh, yes, I have a tripod. Wonderful. Yeah. This is a shot of the uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bridge overlooking mm -hmm. the New York skyline. Um, it's a great spot. Yeah, <laughs> I love this spot. And uh, at that time, we were lucky because the weather was just so nice. It was cool, not cold. Mm -hmm. So, so it was a it was a fun night shooting this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, how do you how do you? Oh, so I think you talked about this before, but like, how do you research the cities you visit? Um, <clears throat> You just like ask your friends or do you, you know go on the internet you know what do you do so um so yes i, I would do a lot of research um mm -hmm. uh, of buildings that i wanted to shoot and say for example if i see online on instagram right some really interesting buildings <clears throat> and then uh and then say hey i'm going to you know go there right uh and visit the city <clears throat> and look for the building so I would do research, I would Google it, I would read up about the building, about the design, the background, the architect, so that <clears throat> so that when I'm there, <clears throat> sorry, when I'm there, I'm able to, I mean, it helps me to understand the building better so that I know that when I'm there, I know what to look out for, that I don't miss out on anything. I mean, sometimes, you know, I, I would go without doing research and then when I come back and say, oh, I should have walked behind or go and walk the other side because I missed that that shot, you know? So mm -hmm. so it's always good, right, to do a mm -hmm. research. And Google, I, what I love about Google Map is like you can actually look at like Google, uh, how would I say, zoom in and look at the angles, you know, of the building. Sometimes it also helps you to know uh, what is a what is a good time to go and shoot the building because you know of the the angle of the sun you know that sort that sort of thing. So what building were you shooting this from? I love the the view. Oh, this one I actually got it from the Rockefeller. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's Rockefeller. I um I have never been up there, so we went up <laughs> there and um like. Empire State Building, you know, um, to get a sunset shot is always difficult just because mm -hmm. this the place is so crowded, right? Mm -hmm. um, I remember I had to slowly push my way through um, uh -huh. between all these people, right? And then get to the ledge, right? And you have people all like, you know, squeezing, you know, and it's like, it's, it's hard, right? But when you get to that spot, you just stay put because <laughs> <laughs> Once you move, you lose it, <laughs> you know. So, um, so when I took this shot, I, I, I know that you know you cannot bring a tripod, so okay. I would have a mini tripod with me, okay. and I will put it on the ledge and um, and then and then take the shot. Mm -hmm. So if you can see, I could not get a, a, a sunset shot because there was just so many people. So mm -hmm. once the sunset is kind of over, people start to leave. And then that's mm -hmm. where you have more room and more uh, options in terms of, you know, different angle that what you want to take, but it will be already kind of uh, 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 dark. But uh, that's right, probably right after blue hour, you still can get some good shots, I think. Mm -hmm. cool. um. Um. Now, where was this taken? This is taken from the Empire State Building. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I managed to squeeze myself in that corner and I stood there for like an hour or so. I didn't move, <laughs> you know, because it was just so packed. Uh, oh, wow. 
So this one, it's like almost sunset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, I mean, um, the X1D, you know, with the with the high dynamic range, you know, and the um, because it's a uh, um, uh, medium format, the details, you know, of uh, every single building really pops, you know. You can mm -hmm. see them, you know, on, even on the raw file. Yeah. So that's what that's why I love about uh, taking. Uh, aerial shots because you can literally go and look into every single window <laughs> of the buildings, you know. So it's actually quite fun. <laughs> um, so we talked about like the the time of day you like to shoot. Is there a favorite weather condition you like to shoot in? It's oh, but uh, definitely not in the cold weather. <laughs> I'm not a fan of cold winter weather, but the best time. <laughs> I would do is like springtime, autumn, summer, you know, uh, you know, then I don't have to worry about being too cold and shivering, you know, and I can yeah. take my time and enjoy and then shoot. <laughs> so uh, this is this is a, a shot taken in the vessel, as you can see, it was sunset and you cannot bring a tripod with you. So it's a it's a it's a handheld shot. Yeah. <clears throat> And now, now this actually makes me miss the city, and you know, like the hustle and bustle, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. This is yeah. Times Square. You 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 describe it. Yeah. Um. I love it. I love I love Times Square. And this is um a shot I took. I think in 2017, late 2017, uh, when I just got the X1D. So I was very excited. It was like, I was like experimenting, you know, um, again, you know, I was kind of blown away, you know, like handheld, this is a handheld shot. Uh, mm -hmm. I think um, it was taken at ISO 400, sorry, 400, aperture at 5.6. And I think my shutter speed was 125 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just with that, right, handheld is so sharp, it's, it's so crisp. The color really pops, and and I do love it when you know when I shoot a a, a cityscape or night scene, especially mm -hmm. when there's it was kind of drizzly that day, you know. Mm -hmm. So you can see right the colors and the reflection from from the road that really pops and, and gives it more, you know, more interest to the image. Mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ooh, now what can you tell us about this image? Yeah, so I, I added this image in this presentation because I wanted to show again, in terms of the dynamic range, this is uh, the, the New York Library uh, mm -hmm. and help, you know, so um, I did take it a little underexposed because I didn't want the, the light at the end of the window to be kind of overblown. So when I got back and go into Lightroom, I just kind of did some uh, just brushing the exposure, you know, and increase the shadows along the corridor walls, uh, you know, and um, the detail stays, even the details on the ceiling, as you can see, you know, I just brighten up a little bit with the, you know, exposure and, and, and I have this great image. It's quite beautiful. Yeah. Now I think the audience will want to know um what your gear kit is like now um so how you so how long have you been using x1d um i got my x1d i think sometime mid of 2017 um and uh, so i've been using it then um uh, and um as as uh as one of the hasselblad masters winners you know we hasselblad gave us each um, an X1D and also the 45 mm lens. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I got it, I got myself also the 30 mm lens. Um, so um, so right now I have 45, 21, 30, mm -hmm. uh, and then I have the 80, I have the mm -hmm. 90. Yeah, that's right. I have those. <laughs> Slowly <laughs> save my money and collect them, right? <laughs> So, but my go-to lenses are, are mainly the 90 and the 30, 
Um, mm -hmm. often when I go out and shoot, I would just bring two lenses with me just because I have uh, bad knees and I, I can't carry anything too heavy. So, mm -hmm. but, um, but when I do, I also shoot for commercial architecture. So I do use a 21 a lot. And if I need to do any wide angle shots, say for example, like the shot I did for the, the whole New York skyline from Rockefeller, I think I use a 21 mm. Um, and then for the 80, I love the 80. Actually, I don't use it so much, but I only use it when I shoot portraits. Mm -hmm. Love it. Beautiful, beautiful, soft um, uh, image from that. Mm -hmm. And then 90 is the one that I use a lot when I shoot close up for architecture. Okay. 45, I don't really use it so much, but I, if I go and do like a, a CD walk, street photography, I would. Uh, I would use the 45. That was a great one for street photography. Yeah, it's, it's great and it's light, you know, so. Mm -hmm. okay, cool. Um, now, you just like recently uh, acquired the X1D2. Have you had a chance to shoot with it yet? Actually, not yet. I just got it like a few weeks ago. Oh. <laughs> I could <laughs> not go out, uh, so I haven't been really shooting. Okay. Um, but I did uh, play with it when I was in New York. Mm -hmm. So um, I love it. It's um, uh, what I love about it is for, I guess, for what I shoot and for my workflow, I particularly like the uh, touch, how would I say, the touch uh, screen on the focus point that I can move it around easily, uh, you know? So, so that's what I love about it. I haven't really, played with other, you know, new features yet. So, mm -hmm. but, um, but I do love that touch uh, focus. It's really great. I, I, and then not to mention the, um, the larger, um, um, how would I say the LCD screen, right? So, um, mm -hmm. faster startup, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I have, yeah, I haven't really played with it that much yet. Hopefully we'll see some more yeah, new work. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> um, no, okay, we're gonna just go back to some of your um your other night. <laughs> yeah, so um as I mentioned, you know, I love uh, to do like aerial shots and taking uh cityscapes at night. Uh, this is actually a shot of uh cityscape of San Francisco. So mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to have a friend that uh, invited me one day to go mm -hmm. up to one of the tallest buildings in uh, San Francisco. So, um, so this was taken a little, I think around sunset time. And, um, and what I wanted to show was also, you know, the details, you know, the lights and mainly the details of of, uh, of the buildings and also, as you can see, um, the buildings in the background. Um, I mean, everything is just so crisp and sharp and the colors mm -hmm. are just amazing. This is almost like straight out from the camera. Wow. I didn't do much um, post-processing. Mm -hmm. This is a great shot as well. Oh yeah, 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 this is the... <laughs> This is one of my favorite buildings in San Francisco. It's called the Sentinel Building. It's also called the Columbus Tower. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, they, this was actually taken from a rooftop. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad that I had some good friends that you know that brought me up to to this roof. Um, and um, this is, I would say, uh, it is the San Francisco version of a flat iron building. Um, it has a kind of a story to it. Is I don't know if it's still owned by uh, Francis Ford Coppola. Mm -hmm. And then um, I read that that one time the basement was used uh, as a recording studio for the Star Wars soundtrack. You know. Oh wow. So, yeah. So it's, it's it has an interesting background. So this shot is actually a long exposure shot mm -hmm. uh, of um, the light trails. Um, I think I may have two images on this image. One is for the building and one is for the light trails of the cars. Yeah. Uh, 
so that you know because of the different um, exposure timing for mm -hmm. the building and also for the the trails of the the cars and i i kind of overlay them together overlay them together cool yeah um more yeah and again um you know i love night photography and this is one of the nights that i decided to drive up to the city and just you know drive around the city and look for some night lights right and i i love i enjoy taking pictures of diners i enjoy mm -hmm. taking pictures of convenience stores at night because mm -hmm. you know they really pop up you know along at along the street and mm -hmm. so, so here i was just taking a shot um again i wanted to share i, I shared this image because of the the colors you know that you can see from the outcome from the x1d yeah it's almost straight out from the camera this one this shot cool oh wow uh, this is just another shot of um um this is taken in singapore uh a shot of uh, a buddhist temple in singapore mm -hmm. and i think it was during Chinese New Year week. So the whole temple was lit up and you can see the lanterns along the bottom of the roof, the perimeter of the roof. And mm -hmm. there was some procession going on. So you can see some people, I think they were kind of like walking around the, the temple. And then of course the background of the, uh, the, the, the city, Singapore city skyline. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have a question from one of our Instagram followers. Um, they are asking, where would your uh, dream photo destination be? Uh, good question. <laughs> I have so many, so many, so many destinations. Mm -hmm. But I think the one that's on top of my list is Dubai. Oh. And I have always wanted to go there. Um, um, just to see the architecture and also the, the cityscape, right? Um, and um, in fact, I was uh, planning to make a trip there. Uh, this year, I was hoping to go there this year actually for the Dubai Expo, 2020 wow. Expo. But because of COVID, you know, so everything is all now postponed, I think to next year. So hopefully next year and when it's safe to travel, I that would probably be but the, the next place that I would visit. And apart from Dubai, I have, um, I also wanted, I, I, I hope to go to Tokyo, mm -hmm. uh, Japan, and also a couple of cities in China, just mm -hmm. because, you know, um, in China right now, there's so many amazing architecture. Uh, I have been to Shanghai and Beijing, and, mm -hmm. you know, and I have seen some really, really, great uh, architecture over there. Um, mm -hmm. It's not only to go there to shoot, but just, you know, being there in person and experiencing it in person, it's really, uh, it's really great, you know, like, you know, it's just not about taking pictures, but also just to see the building itself and, exp and experience the space. Mm -hmm. um. Um, now, you know, we're kind of focusing on your uh, architecture <clears throat> today. Um, you know, I heard you occasionally photograph landscapes and portraitures as well. Um, what would you say is your favorite subject to photograph? I'm obviously architecture, <laughs> but I do <laughs> occasionally, I do enjoy um, uh, doing some street photography, you know, some portraits. Uh, you know, so um, occasionally kind of landscape, if I do visit any places with landscape, you know, um, but uh, yeah, and I, 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 I do like to go to, I especially like to do like small trips, you know, on the road trips in visiting like small towns, you know, um, and uh, I, I, I enjoy, I mean, just shooting, just uh, looking at the, how would I say, the, 
the the small town urban fabric of small towns all these mm -hmm. old small buildings you know um i love it and uh, and also like abandoned um gas stations you know um convenience stores or you know anything like that uh, mm -hmm. i enjoy i enjoy shooting those too yeah yeah and um i think we have a few images that you took um at the broad right is this um yeah. the los angeles yeah so mm -hmm. this one, yeah so um so um once you win the Hasselblad master's award right you um we are cast we are given uh we are assigned right to to shoot uh for the Hasselblad master's book Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I picked the Broad Museum. This is a Broad Museum and it's uh, located in downtown LA. Uh, you won't miss it because it's just right next to the famous Frank Gehry Disney Concert Hall building. Um, and I picked this building because it was, I think it was kind of new at that time. It just opened not too long ago. Um, and also, um, uh, and it has a very interesting, um, it's actually a very interesting architecture, um, mm -hmm. this building. It's actually um, designed by, uh, I can't remember the architect's uh, um, name at this point, I think Diedler and Scofidio or something like that. Um, yeah, sorry. But, um, but uh, yeah, so, and at that time, um, the X1D was not released yet, so we could borrow any Hasselblad uh, cameras. So I borrowed the um, H5D60, H5 what H5D60, yeah. Oh. It was a mm -hmm. it was a it was a large medium format camera, and uh, it was my first time using a, a medium format camera, so it was a, a, a major learning curve for me. It took mm -hmm. me. A, uh, I only had a week, right, to to, mm -hmm. to shoot, and uh, it was uh, so I had to learn how to get used to the camera, you know. And at the same time, you know, shooting this building. So, um, so a friend of uh, a friend of mine who's also a photographer, uh, we went down to LA and spent like three four days there, and um, because it was kind of the first time. Um, uh, there for me looking at the building and shooting the building so we did spend some time just you know looking at how the light falls on the building so we spent a few days there like from morning to evening to see how the light spill onto the building each time um, when you know different time of the day different shadows right mm -hmm. so with that then I would know what is the best time to shoot especially this building as you can see on this image it has a very interesting sort of honeycomb like uh, uh facade right so um so different time of the day the shadows uh, mm -hmm. that falls on this honeycomb it gives it a very different look to the building mm -hmm. so that was a challenge and it was actually really fun to 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 shoot this building yeah, because it, I mean, this image here, like, it looks like a totally different building from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Previous, yeah. Recent. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so this one is interesting. Um, this guy, this random. I, I actually set up. I, I, I did shoot with a tripod for for mm -hmm. for this building. Some, uh, some. I think I shot handheld, but this one because I wanted, I set it up to the frame that I wanted and I just waited for the right people to, to walk by and so happened this guy with his uh, kind of a cool cool hat right mm -hmm. and he happened to turn <laughs> to one turn towards my direction and I just take a shot but as you can see right the the light was coming on probably on the left on the right side right mm -hmm. So it gives it a really, really nice contrast and texture um, mm -hmm. as the background, you know, in the background. Yeah. And, you know, this is like 
at, you know, same with like the last image. Uh, it's something we don't see very often with your images, like putting in, you know, people. Yeah. Something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I do, I do like to have people um, uh, as elements, you know, in my shots, um, just to give it a kind of a scale, you know, to yeah. the building. Um, that's why when I do sometimes street photography, you know, um, I would like to have some people in my shots. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So in this case, I mean, that's why light is so important. And as you can see, um, the lady in the back, right? She's in the light. Mm -hmm. The person in front is in the shadow. Mm -hmm. So, and the light is moving so fast. So you have to kind of, you know, um, uh, I take every opportunity, right? When, mm -hmm. when that, then that moment happens, you gotta capture it like fast. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I look at this as sort of like uh, the building as a, a backdrop, mm -hmm. and then the people as the actors, you know, okay. the story, you know, yeah. And I guess I when I caught this timing, it was just perfect the two person in front, they are walking they are, as they are striding, right? You can see the, the timing of their, their, their footing is kind of the same. <laughs> Perfect. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. so I hope to, I, 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 I hope to shoot more of this kind of shots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I do go out and do a, a walk. <laughs> okay. Um, now, you're very much active in uh, submitting your images to competitions. Um, now, do you have any advice for somebody who wants to do the same? Um, yeah, um, I haven't been really entering that many competitions. I mean, I do, but just um, a few, uh, you know, a bit here and there. Um, and um, I think uh, I would say my advice is. Um, to look at the winning galleries, you know, mm -hmm. the gallery, right, of the winning images, and then study them, right, and see why are they selected as the winning image, mm -hmm. you know. Um, sometimes, you know, there are, sometimes they, you know, some of these competitions, they have some judges' comments, you know, mm -hmm. they will explain why they picked this image, you know, what are the elements, what, what are the, you know, the stories or, you know, anything that capture their attention. And mm -hmm. I think with that, you can kind of like, you know, learn from there, right? And that's kind of like, so when you submit an image, you kind of want to know, you probably need to ask yourself some questions. What is it that you like about your image? You know, mm -hmm. what really, what, I mean, what kind of attention will it bring, right, to the viewer? how striking is it, you know, what's the story behind it. Yeah. So I think that's, <laughs> that's based on no, my it's experience. Really nice. it's really nice. <laughs> uh, now this is, oh, this is also the Oculus. So these are just um, some examples of my other images. Of course, it's the Oculus building, um, mm -hmm. you know, you know, looking at light, shadow, you know, tone, tonal, um, you know, uh, different tones of gray, you know, um, mm -hmm. and basically um, uh, the rule of thirds, right, and um, making sure that the image is kind of balanced, you know, between mm -hmm. the, the, the dark and the light. Yeah. Yes, that's great. And we have another question from um, our Instagram fans. Um, do you do any post-production work? Uh, yeah, um, post-processing, you mean, sort of? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I do, I do a lot of that. Yes, I do. I, I, um, my main tool is actually Lightroom. I'm not, uh, I don't use Photoshop so much. I mean, I do occasionally, but in, I know enough to, to, you know, to, to make that image to look what I want, but I'm not mm -hmm. a good, <laughs> I don't really know how to use Photoshop so well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no. and, and yeah, so again, these uh, images that I took, this is the 
looking mm -hmm. up another perspective when I'm shooting architecture is looking upwards. This is mm -hmm. looking upwards towards the, the vessel. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. And then the, the, I think the copper cladding, right, on the, um, on the uh, underside of the vessel, this one was because it was, again, um, during um, the light was going down already, like low light, you know, towards mm -hmm. sunset, right? So that's why the, the light is more towards kind of the orange side because it was already starting to go down. <clears throat> it's really, really cool image. I really, I'm not, I don't know, I've never seen it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and now, how do you stay inspired and motivated to shoot, especially in 2020 or just in, in general? Uh, how would I say? I would, uh, I would say 2020 is um, a very interesting year. I mean, been working from home, but um, my day job has actually kept me very busy. So, um, and actually, I have not had time to go out and, and shoot. Uh, mm -hmm. And then to stay inspired is, you know, after a long day of work, you know, I just kind of look at my Facebook posting or Instagram, you know, see what other people are doing and um, occasionally look at some presentations, um, you know, just reading articles of, you know, photography or architecture, you know, and then um, processing my photographs just to to kind of de-stress right after a long day of work yeah yeah looking at my earlier shots yeah but i haven't been shooting much at all this year yeah. <clears throat> um hopefully the audience will be inspired by looking at your work today to go out and oh shoot. yeah i hope so <laughs> <clears throat> um Okay, so yeah, I think, um, you know, what can you tell us about this image? This is so colorful. Oh, this, this image is actually one of those very, um, mm -hmm. it's uh, one of those Instagram shots, right? Uh, this is actually a, a, a residential building and kind of an urban mm -hmm. house in uh, Hong Kong. It's called, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's Choi Hong Estate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so like I mentioned, you know, I would stop over in Hong Kong almost every year and then um, during my kind of layover I would uh, um, you know go and go and visit all these places and um, you know, see for myself right um, so I kind of like this building I, I can understand why it's so popular you know this this image in this building just because of the colors and also I mean I look at it as I mean you can see, you know, the colors, the buildings, the grid is so organized, but yet there's a disorder to this image. If you look at all the laundry that's hanging out of the windows, you know, that's adding all this interesting details to the image. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, this is, um, this is a shot that I, I uh, remember I mentioned that I went out one morning uh, mm -hmm. to to shoot in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So um, of one of my um, views when I shoot architecture is looking upwards. And, mm -hmm. and what I like about this image is because that time, right, the sun was coming up and it creates that sun rays, you know, I didn't do it, it was natural, right? The mm -hmm. sun that built us through that two buildings, you know, and it created that line. And I say, oh wow, this is so cool, right? And um, and also to me, I mean, those cables, those are the, the cables from our San Francisco trolley bus, right? Mm -hmm. I added it into the image. To me, mm -hmm. it's like it's uh, adding it, it, the cables are like sort of connectors, like they're bringing all these buildings together. You know, it's not a hinder, you know, it's actually a cool uh, element onto this image. <laughs> it adds that lines, right, that's connecting to all these buildings. Mm -hmm. wow. And um, this is going to be our last image for today. Oh, um, okay. 
<laughs> so yeah, this is another interesting building, relatively new, I think, not uh, just one or two years old, I think. This is the Hong Kong Opera House. Mm -hmm. um, and um, this image is shooting upward, as you can see. This mm -hmm. is as you go into this building, you, are, you come to this really huge space. Um, and this is kind of the main lobby. And you can see the people yeah, right along the, the balcony that's looking down in the in the main lobby. Mm -hmm. um, so um, again, the details of uh, this space is really beautiful. The contrast mm -hmm. between the white and the red. And I think the design kind of sort of inspired by um, uh, Chinese lantern, you know, oh. if you can see, right, that kind of a wavy kind of image, yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so this one, I think I use a tripod. Yeah, um, it's an open space. I, um, I brought my tripod with me. They didn't say anything. I just set it up um, mm -hmm. and it, it took me a while to try to get it kind of uh, perfect in terms of, <laughs> you know, make sure that I'm in the middle, in the center, uh, you know, yeah, so. Yeah, I love this building. It's really a great building. If you have a chance to visit Hong Kong, you should you know, drop by and have a look at it. Yeah, I would love to go to that city. <laughs> uh, but thank you. Thank you so much, Sui. Um, that was our last image. Um, and before we wrap up, would you like to tell us a bit about what you have coming up? Maybe? Um, at this mm -hmm. point, I think uh, I'm actually trying to focus more on um, how would I say, uh, showcasing my work in galleries. You know, mm -hmm. I'm trying to work towards that um, and, you know, finding a broader audience and then, you know, concentrate on maybe it's like private commissions or assignment. Um, occasionally I do shoot for some uh, commercial architecture. So that uh, kind of, that's pretty fun also. Um, and then I just got myself the, a use main condition 120 mm lens. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to try and do some macro photography while I'm stuck at home. So <laughs> you will you will probably see some 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 new stuff. <laughs> soon, I hope. <laughs> We're excited to see see more of your work soon. So, um, so that's okay. what. That's why it's coming. Cool, very cool. Um, now, I would like to thank Sui again for joining us and sharing her work. Uh, to check out more of her work, uh, you can follow her on Instagram at SuiCO or and her website, SuiCO.com. For anything Hasselblad, if you don't follow us yet, we're at Hasselblad and we are excited for the upcoming new year with more online events. <laughs> Happy Great. holidays and stay safe, thank everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Amy, and also Tim. <laughs> um, happy holidays and looking forward to the new year. Yay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you.